Hello and welcome fellow humans to Biffington's YouTube channel and continuation of our Let's Play the Dark 21.20 mod pack. I have been working off camera diligently to get the Eternal Stella made. I finally got it made. I have about half a dozen videos of, of trying to automate various bits and parts of this and it's all failed. I failed to automate just about every aspect of using this um, using this mod to make things a bit faster. And so I'm just going to show you what I've got so far and how it's working. And I'm not going to trouble <laughs> the editor at all about looking about, at those other videos. And we're just going to delete them. And so I'm just going to run over here to this building that I made. This has all been already shot on camera, so I'm going to have to do, show you again. And this is a building for the um, Bindar Canis mod. And I built it from all the blocks in the mod. And it's really kind of cool. Some of these are actually from the using the altar. Big X jobs supposed to be there. And so it looks like there's another one down here. So it's it's got a really cool look to it. I got these really great pillars in here and stuff. And I kind of made it like a columned, columned structure here with some of the uh runic glass on top and a pink and peek into the altar in there. And uh Got some, um, these are from the model. So, these doors, these orum doors, and I've got pressure plates right here. You can't really see them. <laughs> and I've got the other doors over here. This is from the elder wood. This is from wood in the, in the dark forest that it kind of looks like little, um, like scary totem poles in there. And uh, this is the kind of the structure for the Hephaestus Forge. So, I have uh, pedestals here. I just made an, another for um, Eternal Stella here. So I'm going to use it to, to make these various charms and things that we have and tools to make them eternal. This this gavel doesn't seem to make... Oh, it has it has ritual uses remaining as 21, so there is a limit on that. Um, and I'm also going to make this soul extractor um, eternal as well. And so... Um, I, will, I have to slip in some video here showing the various stages of getting here. Because this is stage, this is tier three, Hephaestus Forge, and it went through one and two. And I, I tried to make the first stage of Hephaestus Forge, and I could not because I was using the wrong stuff. I'm using arcane polished darkstone. You need to use arcane chiseled polished darkstone, which is a different recipe. It uses a nugget of the metal of the dorm. So these blocks, I even removed all the stairs around because I thought that was a problem. They, they, look, they look very similar, especially in JEI with their small little images. They are not the same in all these blocks. I think it's just decorative it needs to go somewhere else. Back in the system. And so now we need this arcane shield back, dark zone, which need nine of those, I guess. Look at all the stuff it takes to make them. It's kind of funny. Okay, let's go. Thank you. There we go. Okay, that looks different, doesn't it? It's a little smaller square on the inside. I, they don't have any function they're not actually are they are the actual you put things on them no they're not like they're not they're not like pillar uh pedestals or anything like that and so now we can put our smithing table on top of the arcane chisel polished dark stone and we should have the first tier if i click it there it goes um I, let's see if this works And we did that stuff again. This magic dust. Wire. It is that stuff. Oh, excellent. Okay, we got tons of that. And so these little crystals will build up. I think, oh, yeah, it's building up art all over time. I'm sure if that's a day or night kind of a thing, but. So apparently, if you right click it, no longer with the uh, dust, if you use a gavel. I still don't know how to make the highest level one, but I can go ahead and make the diamond one. Made that blacksmith gavel thing, which is just play. And well, that that does work. Okay. So is that going to upgrade that thing at the same time? That is awesome looking. Thank you. 
Whoa! That was a fantastic animation there. And we have tier two, I believe that's what this is now. And we kept all the materials we had in there already. All right, recording again. We got 9,000 blood in here, over 9,000. I put the spawner down, did the usual thing. Killed a bunch of zombies. And we have 9,000 blood. We have 50 souls and 1,600 RM. So that should be enough to go and make it tier three. So we just need more of these crystals and let's start. So right there. That out of there. Oh, I have it right here. Four crystals. And we're going to need something else, which is chisel polished dark stone. And to keep track of exactly what that is, because there's so many different blocks in here. Chisel polished dark stone. Nice. Okay. So we've got the dorum over here. That's the uh, golem out there. This is part of his territory where the building was built. He was a patrol in here now. He's trying to get back in. <laughs> he's trying to get back in there. All right, I'm going to hit the diamond hammer. Hopefully this is sufficient. And go. Yes, that is working. Nice. That's a really nice animation. Congratulations to the mod author and putting the effort into making that happen. That's really fantastic. It has been somewhat painful to get through this process without the usual hand holding and 3D model to show me where all the blocks go. Um, but it's 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 certainly been doable. Yes, that's tier three. And there's kind of a comedy steps in process there, and I had to do some learning to figure out what that was. The mod author has on their um first forge page. A, a really kind of nice video showing an animation showing the various stages of how to make this altar and labeling the various blocks. There's no like um, 3D ghost image that you then fill in. You have to kind of like just know it from looking at the pictures and transpose this under here. So that same block that's underneath these pillars is also underneath the forge. And then you've got these chiseled arcane polished dark stone. And then everything else here is polished dark stone. And that is basically a seven by seven square with three blocks at the end. And I kind of made it a bit confusing because I used these uh, polished dark stone stairs all around it. And those are not part of the structure, but you know, that kind of makes it look nice. And then I, I kind of surrounded that and some other blocks from the mod. And this is Stellarite blocks. It's like nine of these Stellarite pieces. And you'll find about one of those per chunk. So you can get an idea of how many chunks I've, I've, I've quarried. And we've got arcane crystal blocks, and those are nine of the crystals. And then we've got the Diorum, and those are all kind of, if you look at the, um, the refined storage system, these are all programmed in here, make these things. It's, it's, it's all very kind of involved. Anyway, so the editor will slip in various videos as needed. So I also talked about this, um, what is this called? This Chibano. Pabano furnace. And okay, so now that I've got the platform made, I'm going to make this furnace right across from it. And the way it's a multi block, so the first thing I'm going to do is put down four of the polished dark stone, which again, you use the uh, stone cutter to make. And then also use the polished dark stone bricks, also from the stone cutter. Put that down in a plus pattern, and then make a pretty much a U shape with bricks again on top. Then you want to make, leave the center, center hole open, <laughs> leave that center spot open as a void. And then you want to make this a bono core, which is just dark stone around a blast furnace. And I already have a lot of blast furnaces, so I'm just going to put that down right there. And then do that same pattern you had on the bottom, four more of the polished dark stone. And then another plus sign of the the bricks and then i think you need to click it with this little catalyst like material which i don't oh, we do have one so just click this there now the multi-block has been made excellent and it, it does have some pretty good uses i mean it cooks two things at once and it uses coal and souls to um 
fire it, and I guess this will allow you to get some extra residue out. So if we had, we don't need to use this in any way, shape, or form, but if we had some raw, like for instance, um, iron here, we don't need any iron. Uh, maybe it was copper. Copper in here. We're gonna put two things of copper in there, and then we can get some coal. And actually we can use, because of Batania, I think we can use, I think how long I've been running that mob grinder. We have 28 million blaze rods. I think we can use blaze rods in there, yeah, as well as, it's like a coal. I think it's added by Botania, the ability to use that. And it cooks two things at once. And we're not getting any residue, we need this spirit dog. That is awesome looking. All right, so we're back in here. We're going to, we've got the soul sand. I made the wood from the thing as you saw. And it's extract souls. From soul sand. So it's been soul of soul sand. All right, so we've got some souls this time, and I'm, I'm sure this time it will work even better. <laughs> so we put some copper in here. Yep. Not that much copper, really. Okay. I mean, copper ingots. So it's got this residue now. Residue fullness, two of 64. What goes in that one, I wonder? Oh. What is this stuff used for, besides this? Looks like it has no use. All right, so once I got to a certain amount here, I guess it's nine. It makes an extra block for you over here. That's what the souls do. And I don't know if that could be automated. I'm not going to look because I don't need to use this and I'm not going to look at it. I did try to automate this soul extractor. This is what you use to. Um, I'm not going to use that one because that's what I want to make. There's no durability loss on it. Use this one over here. You get the souls from soul sand just by right clicking it. And I have a little automation here where this is a block placer so putting down soul sand. And this is a modular router with a block breaker. And it's breaking specifically soul of sand. So once you take the soul out, it becomes soulless. And I, I tried a lot of different ways to automate that. Short story is I could not find a way that would automate it. <laughs> I tried uh, modular routers. I tried the miner from Cyclic. I tried the. Um, this that thing called the I tried this item user here and that wouldn't do it. And then I finally tried integrated dynamics. You see all the stuff that had to be made in here for integrated dynamics to try this. I tried to fake the player simulators. And to get those to work, remember you have to go in here into your a few of these team settings and set all fake player settings to true. Otherwise, they will not work anywhere, anyhow. And uh, it will not, it does not operate the soul extractor. And it will not put the ingredients in for, for these. If you look at the recipe here, you, the, the pillars over there have to, the pedestals have to have three of these uh, ex-petrified ex orbs that you get from mining, or you can make them. And like, we got them all from mining. And accelerate piece in there and then put a diamond into the Hephaestus smithing uh Hephaestus forge and then right click that with a gavel of some kind i'm using a diamond gavel because i can't figure out how to use the next the highest tier one i can't figure out how to make it anyway and it didn't work the fake players and the uh think from cyclic we'll put them in but it takes it back out as, a, as, a, as like a cycle it's putting it in and out, in and out, in and out. And I looked at uh, uh, Dewey's channel, and he showed on all the mod seven. He showed using automating this this Hephaestus Forge with a fake player, and it doesn't blink in and out. And if I try to use Hephaestus Forge with those things blinking, it will cause an explosion, and you lose all the materials in there. So I couldn't get it to work. It's all has to be done manually. And so if you look at the Stellarite, not the Stellarite, the Eternal Stella. You need these materials, and then you need some some oil, which is what those white crystals are giving you, building up over time. 
These souls need one soul for each. You need a thousand blood. And no experience here, but a thousand blood. And you get blood by killing mobs on this uh, altar with this mystical dagger. Now, I've, I've enchanted this, and I've given it a, um, uh, an imbuement from Apotheosis. I didn't realize I also got, uh, if you look at their second yellow thing there, slain enemies have a 5% chance to have a loot pinata. I didn't realize I was getting that, but I got loot pinata. And so overall damage is 17.25. And it's even with a gem in there to try to boost it up higher. So it takes two shots per, per zombie. And you get about 700 blood per zombie. And I also have this relic in there. allows you to create new alloys. I don't really think I even need that. Seems a lot of experience. There's no experience needed. So I don't think this is relic is needed at all. And so... Um, see, I have some souls on me. I'm going to put some souls in here, yeah. And those fill up this bar here, the souls. It takes one soul. So it's I can really show the process on camera here. Um, yeah, I've got this stuff on here. So it's it's three of these guys. Uh, one of those. And then one diamond in the middle. One diamond. You can put a whole stack in there. It'll consume them all. You don't put more than one diamond. And so you, so you can see it's ready to go. The, the, the altar says it's ready to go. It's got everything it needs. Right click it with the gavel to start the process. You can see it gobbling those items down and a very nice animation here in the center of the um of the altar this looks really cool and of course if you remove an item during this process it messes it all up you lose everything works in progress and it did it and that's how you get eternal stella just like that and let's go ahead and go to use one right now me out. <laughs> Going to use. I have, a, I have a smithing table right over here. So you need the item you want to use. I'm going to make this charm right here. Now I have it turned off, so it's not using durability. That's one thing. I went and repaired it in the um, the anvil over there from Cyclic, and then I turn make sure to turn it off before I picked it back up. It's it's always it's a hundred percent good. And I turn the cell in there. And you have to use these smithing templates which is a, a regular netherite upgrade smithing template surrounded by dark stone. Okay, get that from mining. And now you have eternal charm of talisman. Is this thing? Charm talisman, an eternal one. So this should never break. If I turn this on, it's never going to use durability again. Um, we can do it for all of these guys here. Um, make them all eternal. The snowfall damage, that is so useful. And I wanted to make, yeah, this one too. I'm going to need another one, I think. So that's eternal. I'm going to turn that back on. Now I can put those in there. Have those run all the time. And so this one here is already eternal. And so is this one and the ring over here. It gives extra luck. Those are all eternal. No longer have to repair those or check those or worry about those. Let's and there you go. That's how it's done. I'll leave some links in the description of how other people have used it and automated it, and maybe you can learn some more from what they do. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.